we're actually on our way to go pick up my 90D from the service center. Just had an annual maintenance and uh, checkup and who knows what else. And I think a car seat because uh, I'm hitting 50,000 miles on mine. And uh, well, we're in this 100D as a loaner and not just it being a 100D, it's a brand spanking new 100D. It's got 601 miles on it now. But uh, when we picked it up, it had about 100 on there. I'm the first person, other than the service center, to get this car as a loaner. On top of that, it's also got autopilot too. Um, I have never been able to get a, you know, more than a couple minutes um, of testing on a autopilot 2 vehicle so far. And uh, so this was a really nice treat because I got to, you know, compare it hand in hand. Uh, 50,000 miles of driving with Autopilot 1 compared to, you know, 500 miles so far of Autopilot 2. And uh, so why don't we just start with that. My thoughts so far in Autopilot 2 are, uh, it is still a very, very long way behind Autopilot 1. Uh, this thing is braking, hard braking. We've had high five hard braking stops on the freeway for overpasses or road signs. No other vehicles in sight, well, in front of us, but behind us, yes. And this thing has done full brake lockup, as if someone just took their foot and slammed it on the brakes. Uh, it is doing a much harder time of actually keeping lanes. Now, with a vehicle in front of us, like, uh, like the semi-truck that's in front of us right now, it does considerably better because not only does it have the actual lane markers, but also the vehicle in front of us to follow. Now, if we were just behind a truck with no lane lines, or lane lines with no truck, uh, this thing was doing horrible. It was weaving around like you can't believe. Uh, and it also takes considerably longer than my 90D uh, with Autopilot 1 to actually lock onto lane lines or vehicles in front of us. Uh, another thing I can comment on is, even though there's vehicles off to the side, they do not show on the screen. Uh, it only shows vehicles that are either directly in front of you or if you're doing a lane change, as you're changing lanes, it will show the vehicle off to the side. Uh, and finally, uh, the sonar sensors are supposed to do a, or be able to read twice the distance. That's the 12 sonar, ultrasonic sonar sensors all the way around the vehicle. They're supposed to do eight meters, whereas Autopilot 1 sonar is only supposed to be capable of four meters. However, on roads and in situations where it would show the proximity on the screen, on my 90D with Autopilot 1, it does not show it as frequently or as accurately on Autopilot 2. So in terms of actual usage, uh, Tesla has still got a very, very far way to go in terms of catch-up. And we're talking Autopilot 2 hardware has been out for about one year, two months as of, as of this point. And it is just... Oh, we got to exit here. And it is just... It's it's unsafe. I mean, uh, not, that, not saying that I would, but... On autopilot one, I'd have no hesitations uh, letting the car, you know, sit. I, I can sit back, keep my hands close to the wheel, and let the car do all the work. Whereas autopilot two, no, it's 100% hands on all the time. This thing just decides to drive over lane lines, um, swerve back and forth, it ping pongs. It's very discouraging that, that Tesla hasn't gotten this thing up to speed quite yet. Now on to the actual vehicle itself. Um, there's a few things in this car that I get to see um, that are somewhat also new. Uh, we have the cream interior on this vehicle. And I gotta be honest, I, I, as most of you already know, almost everything I do is in the color black. I wear black hat, black shirt, black coat, black pants, black shoes, black socks. That's my color, or anti-color your choice take one but I got to admit the cream interior cream carpeting it adds a look and feel more of luxury 
that is, you know, that's what the feel that Tesla is supposed to have. And uh, I, I, I gotta admit, I'm really, really liking it. Uh, now this car also has uh, the, I think it's the Ashwood trim and decor. And uh, that looks really good, and I'm glad they got rid of the, the straight piano black plastic, as that was a very cheap looking. Unfortunately, I do have that, um, as uh, it was more of a budget budget issues, which dictated that. Autopilot was more important than decor for me, especially since my 90D was kind of like my one and only chance at a do-over. And I gotta let Shao lay out right here. Here you go, sweetheart. Okay. Text me when you're on your way out. Okay. All right. Do you need anything before? No. Okay. Honey, you're taking ch charging cords with you. There we go. <laughs> she always does that. find a parking space here. Ah, here we go. Let's keep an eye on the door. So, let's move on. The headliner in this car is all black, which I love because the original textile headliner of the olden cars uh, were pretty, pretty cheap, cheap feeling. And, uh, but there's a difference. I have a black headliner on my car, but it's an Alcantara. This one wasn't option when I ordered my 90D. And this is more of a, oh, like the kind of, uh, like what a, a sports jersey would be made out of. And you know what? I actually do like this better than the Alcantara, as I would find this easier to keep clean and easier to clean. Uh, the Alcantara just gets matted and once it gets dirty, it's hard to clean, and if you clean or scrub it too hard, then you leave little marks that just, it's permanent. I mean, and this, you could probably scrub this all day and cause no ill effects. So I'm liking that on this car too. Uh, one thing I dislike, they made the rear view mirror a little smaller. Don't like that at all. And uh, in terms of fit and finish on the overall vehicle, overall, the fit and finish is pretty darn good on this car, but I am going to point out some issues. Uh, one, this does not latch very well. The uh, sun visor, uh, the plastic is somewhat deformed, and it's not just this side, it's also this one. So both sides, the visors don't stay in very well. If you leave them up and clicked in, they'll they'll stay while you're driving. But down, um, I've just driving on a slightly bumpy roads, they popped right out, and uh, these are probably going to have to be replaced. And just by the looks on the plastic, it, it it just doesn't look quite right. It looks like maybe the mold wasn't hot or the uh, plastic wasn't hot enough when it was injected. Uh, so, I, I mean that that kind of bugs the crap out of me. So we got. Uh, a smaller, smaller mirror. Okay, we're on, uh, correction. We're on uh, fit and finish. Uh, so we got that. Another thing is this one's got the all glass roof, which, you know what? I am loving this all glass roof, and the all glass roof is giving you guys the point of view. I wish I could give you guys in a lot of my videos. Uh, I can mount my suction cups on the ceiling. I love the open feeling that it gives in the car, and it's just overall, it's awesome. It's tinted perfectly. Uh, I'd probably put another coat of tint on it. Actually, you know what? No, I wouldn't. I'd probably leave it just as it is. It's just right. And uh, yeah, and I, I hate panoramic or, or roofs that can open because of the leak factor. Not if, just when they will leak. However, and it's gonna, it's pretty much impossible to show you guys. The gap on the headliner to where it meets the glass is enough to put my pinky in there. And at night, when your map lights are on, that light that comes through the backside and reflects off the glass. 
and even look at look at this look. I can see all the electrical up there everything I can even feel it this thing's not even clicked on this whole thing's coming off Wow well I suppose if you are looking to run your dash cam wiring for your back view it'd be really easy to run it just around the seams you can just shove it in that little crack all the way around although there's uh, airbags in these there's side curtain airbags uh, but uh, you could do that and make your install quite a bit cheaper but at night you can just see you see the reflection and just sitting right here I can see all the wiring up in there just reflecting off the glass without even touching that so it's that's a very cheap feel to me there uh, in terms of the seats um, I'm liking these seats a lot better than the old next-gen seats um, now it's also my understanding that the, uh, the new head, head, headboards on the seats were supposed to be adjustable. I can't figure it out how to do that. Uh, sound system. This one's got the premium sound system, subwoofer in the back. It's great. Uh, handles pretty well. Um, the actual smoothness of the ride is, well, I got coil springs, and I'll always do coil springs if given the option over air. But um, it, this one uh, with the air suspension is very nice uh, and very soft, which leads to a problem, though, is it's too soft. I just like playing with that. Let's take a look at steering mode, comfort, standard, or sport. Now... Unless you're Reese Roberts, if, and I know you're watching Reese, uh, you probably have your steering set for sport because that's really how Teslas were meant to be driven. Uh, in fact, uh, when the uh, 85D or P85D was released, they actually got rid of the choice and had sport only for a while, except for a little bit of blood backlash from customers that were upgrading. Said, "Give me my comfort back." Well. The problem is, on this car, sport mode handles like comfort mode on my 90D. That much of a difference. And I, I don't like it. I feel like I'm driving a 1980s Lincoln Town Car land boat. And just, you know, going for a, a, a nice cruise out, to, out with the Yacht Club. Don't like it. Not at all. Um, I did try chill mode. Uh... I could see a few cases where chill mode would be useful, but uh, we're not going to get into that on this video since I will be able to have that on mine uh, since I, well, I got the firmware upgrade. Uh, otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same in terms of uh, interior. The fit and finish overall is much improved, and uh, this one actually hasn't even been gone over by the service center um, in terms of prep prep work for a customer or anything like that so this is pretty much how it rolled off the truck um, they took they peeled a lot of the plastic off took it for a few spins probably went to get lunch and that was about it um, paint has not been touched yet by Tesla service center so it's still from the factory uh, the paint job on this car it's not my color this is this is like a, a gray dolphin gray I think it is, or a gray of some sort. What do they call this color? Oh, Midnight Silver Metallic Paint. The paint itself actually looks kind of good. Um, if I went with the metallic, I'd probably go with the obsidian next if I had a do-over again, which I don't. Um, but the paint itself... The paint job looks good. Paint quality still sucks. Okay, this is a family video. Got to keep the language. The paint quality still sucks. We'll just leave it at that. Um, in fact, this car is freaking swirl mark galore. Uh, every panel, when the sun hits it, it's just swirls upon swirls upon swirls. Uh, a few other things. Uh, this has got enhanced autopilot. Obviously, that's not active yet. Cream interior, 19-inch uh, slipstream root wheels, uh, midnight silver metallic paint, premium interior and lighting. Premium interior means the uh, 
well, the lighting, you get the lighting under the door arm armrest, flooring, um, which used to be standard, but now it's part of the premium package. And uh, which also included the figured ashwood decor. Well, that wasn't included on the premium package when I got my 90D. Overall, this car cost $113,000 after destination and regulatory fees. That's pretty high. That's uh, quite a bit more than my 90D was, though. But, oh, the seats, the seats, the seats. Tesla has gotten rid of the leather. There's no more leather anymore. Now, it is the vegan. Everything's vegan, 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 vegan. I don't care. I like my freaking cows. That being said, I was very skeptical of how the vegan seats would end up since um, the only new generation style interiors I got to see so far have been the ultra white interior on a Model X sitting in the Highland Park showroom. And the quality of that material is absolutely horrendous. You take your finger and lightly press and you can just see that material stretching. And it's just, oh my God, a button, not even something sharp, just a button on my pants would probably cut that stuff. It's horrible, horrible quality. That is not automotive grade at all. The premium white, ultra white interior uh, is what I'd liken to those $35 um, uh, eBay car seat covers. That bad. That being said, these vegan seats in this... Oh, this Charlie. Yeah. Parking space, I'll pull right up. No, I don't see you yet. I'm pulling up right in front of where I dropped you off. Oh, I see you. Okay, I'll be right there. Back to seats. That being said, come on, you can walk a little faster. The quality of these vegan seats is really, really good. It's not quite as good as the textile seats, uh, but if you want a leather alternative, this is really darn close and really really good. There's Lele. Hi. Say hi to everybody. Oh, hello. Okay, got what you needed? Yeah. Shaolay's got a wonderful job. She is a personal shopper. What? Okay. What? Yep, she she does she does shopping for people that can't shop for themselves, which means I'm doing a lot of driving because we still we're still working on getting her her driver's license. I hope I get it and I can go everywhere with Mister. What? You don't want to go everywhere with me? You're mad at me. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at all these people that can't drive worth crap out here. Illinois people, I'm talking to you. You hear me? So, yeah, the interior, the seats, the material is actually excellent. Extremely impressed by the quality level of the seats in this car and the, the fox leather they're using. So I would definitely, I was skeptical because I like my leather, even though I went with textile. Once again, it was a cost issue thing for me. Uh, but I would definitely not hesitate to get this material. Uh, now the question you've all been waiting for, how is the 100 kilowatt hour battery? Well, unlike the 85s, or excuse me, unlike the 90 kilowatt hour battery, the 100 kilowatt battery actually is 100 kilowatt hour. Is that it? No, that's a freaking Ford. Uh, it actually is 100 kilowatt hour. Supposedly it's supposed to be like 101 kilowatt hour and you got like 97 or 98 kilowatt hours usable don't quote me exactly on that but the fact of the matter is the 100 kilowatt battery is actually the advertised capacity 
On the other hand, the 90 kilowatt hour battery pack, such as in my car, was actually only about 85.8 kilowatt hours. So personally, the 90 actually should have been an 85. And the original 85 kilowatt hour battery packs were only like 80.5 to 81 kilowatt hour. So those really should have been 80s. So I think there's a lot of misleading marketing done by Tesla. That being said further, in one year, the capacity of my 90 kilowatt hour battery pack is actually only about 78 kilowatt hours now. It really sucks. Anyways, back to the 100. Because there is such a difference in actual capacity between the 90 and the 100, uh, whew, the range that this thing goes, I mean, we got like 15 kilowatt hour more capacity than a 90D. That much. At a full charge, 100% charge, this thing gets to 339 rated miles. That is insane. I've put I've put 500 miles on this car and I've only charged it once this entire time. And that's when she was shopping at the Pleasant Prairie Outlet Malls. I plugged in at the supercharger. Boom! 339 rated miles on a single charge. Tesla, you are moving in the right direction on that, but I'm pissed that you guys lied so much about the other battery packs. The only other battery pack, and I'm not talking about software limited, but the only other battery pack that Tesla has put out that is the actual capacity that it's advertised are the original 60 kilowatt hour battery packs. Those were actually 60.1 kilowatt hours. So impressive, impressive, impressive. And the amount of acceleration this has over my 90D is, it, it's got quite a bit better acceleration. Uh, I know there was uncorking done for the 75, and the 100s had a slightly better 0 to 60. And you can feel it, without even being the performance model, you can really feel it. So overall, overall this 100D gets a major pass. In fact, if this thing was black, or obsidian black, I'd probably start counting my pennies to try and see how much uh, they give me for trade-in to get this, which I already know they won't give me crap for trade-in of my 90D because Tesla's trade-in values are horrible. So, I think that covers it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this review of a brand new 100D. Enjoyed some of the other side clips that I've done um, incorporated. If you'd like to uh, support my channel, please like, subscribe, uh, if you would like to help support the actual making of the videos, please consider donating through my Patreon link, which is in the description box below. And also, if you don't want to donate money, you can consider mining some Monero cryptocurrency for me. That link is also in the description box below. Turn it on, leave it go overnight or a couple nights, nothing to install. Just open the webpage and hit start mining. That's all there is to it. See you guys all next video. After this one, we should have coming Autopilot 2. How many cameras is it actually using?